Hallo, mein Name ist Lily Hunes. Ich komme aus Colorado, aber dieses Jahr ich bin eine Austauschschülerin in Berlin, Deutschland. Und uh, ich mag deinen YouTube-Kanal. <lacht> okay, so hi, my name is Lily Hunes and I am from Colorado, but this year I am an exchange student in Berlin, Germany. And I made a YouTube channel and I want to expand my videos a little bit more. This video is not going to be in German if that's okay <laughs> because I wanted to show a little bit of my American friends and many of my German friends speak very, very good English. <laughs> But this is just the differences between the USA and Germany and I just wanted to share it. I I just wanted to expand my YouTube channel a little bit because every month I make a video, kind of a recap. <laughs> It looks a little like a PowerPoint. I know, but it's it's a fun thing for me to look back on and it's a cool thing for people to see what I've been doing every month. But I wanted to be able to show a little bit more of what my everyday life is here and what I make and what I do and what I've noticed throughout these last six months, almost seven months. And it's just pretty much a whole nother experience. Okay, so I have a little notebook here and pretty much I'm just going to go down a list of what I've made and I've had some help from some other exchange students and pretty much just what I have noticed in Germany that is different or completely different and yeah so to begin with i want to start with just what i've noticed in berlin and mainly some big cities is that many museums are free and that is really awesome because i i live in denver colorado to begin with and many museums if you're under 18 you have to pay maybe like five to ten dollars to get into certain places like when you're under 12 a lot of things are free but when you're eight like over 12 and until 18 it's a little bit of a student or reduced price but I have been able to visit a lot of cool things okay so this is my ticket stack I collect all the tickets of different places that I've gone to and pretty much I'm very lucky because most of these are free like this last weekend I went to the Neues Museum in Berlin and you see bis 18 Jahr so that means that like until I'm 18 it is free so and that's pretty awesome because i just spend my weekends or any times that my school ends fairly early i go and check out a new museum or check out a new place um so the next one is that english is spoken pretty much everywhere i've noticed that in many other countries too when you don't know the native language you can always turn to english i know that is not good when you go to another country to learn a new language but it is very helpful I noticed that in my first month and second month in Germany, when I didn't know what I wanted to say or like, I would like this. I noticed that when I don't really know what I want to say or it's a little hard to understand me, then I turn to English because most of the people either speak a little bit or have a really good amount of English. And I've noticed that in my class, they speak really good English. So when I don't understand something, They can always explain it in English to me if that is needed. Another thing that is really big and that Berlin is known for is clubbing. I've gone once clubbing, but it's actually really fun. And that's kind of an experience that we don't really have in the USA. In Germany, it is 16. And that's pretty typical because then you can purchase alcohol. And it's just kind of like you're considered not necessarily an adult, but you're considered older. At least in Berlin, we don't really have many school dances or anything run by the school so that you can get together with friends and go to a club or just go out and dance. It's really a fun experience. The last point that I have that is specific to Berlin and big cities is that there is every type of public transportation you can possibly think of. So in the US, public transportation, especially where I live, is not good. <laughs> But in Germany, I normally take the S-Bahn to school And that's pretty much a train that is not necessarily like regional, but it's faster than a U-Bahn and a Straßenbahn. But it's pretty much, it goes to different places. But And then there's also the U-Bahn, and that is more of like a subway, like in New York 
or metro or big cities because that's more efficient when you're moving from like street to street and that's really big in like downtown or Mitte Berlin and then also there are Straßenbahns and I use that to go to my volunteer place and also when I want to just go to some place that's really close but it's kind of a distance to walk and then lastly there's buses <laughs> I don't use buses too much since I have the U-Bahn and the Straßenbahn and I also prefer walking but uh, the buses are a little hard to understand but there are plenty of people who love buses but I'm more of a train person and everything is super efficient here I must say because it's not necessarily on time and <laughs> like trustworthy but when it does come on time and it gets you where you need you're really thankful for it this is more the typical German not necessarily stereotypes but what we think and what is different so to begin with is that there are many popular foods here like when people think of popular foods in America they think of burgers french fries anything that like is a fast food that's what people typically think of America but in Germany one of the biggest things here a lot of people think oh beer but no I think that Germany is more of a bread based country <laughs> because on a daily basis, I normally eat about four to six pieces of like sliced bread every day. And then on the weekends we get brochen, which is essentially rolls. And then some other common foods that are more of like a special or are not necessarily like every day is worst. So that's like sausages and those are personally my favorite. <laughs> and then there's also schnitzel. That's like one of the biggest things that people see and they think, oh, Germany. But I mean, I've normally ate schnitzel maybe once every month, but it's more of like a specialty treat and you can get it with Brötchen, like my school sells Wurst mit Brötchen and Schnitzel mit Brötchen. So that's just what schnitzel or sausage inside a roll. <laughs> so, and then lastly is Döner hard. That is a typical Berlin food and it's also throughout all of Germany like the German fast food but it's from Turkey so but I I personally enjoy it but it's not an everyday food for me <laughs> but yeah that's a typical German food so the meals normally are breakfast lunch and dinner so for breakfast I normally eat bread or muesli which is similar to cereal they also have like normal cereal and then for lunch and dinner so this is where it's a little bit different for people some people have for lunch a warm meal so that's what us in the US would have for dinner we consider that as our warm meal and then our cold meal is for lunch for me personally we have cold meals for lunch because both my host parents work so then we eat a warm meal together but for I know for some of my friends in other parts of Germany it is a warm meal at lunch because like an hour to two hours pause in their school day where they go and they they go home and eat and like their host mom or their host father makes them lunch and they all eat together as a family and then they go back to school and then in the evening when they're all together they, they eat dinner and they pretty much it's cold it's like a sandwich or it's like butter cucumbers and then like some sort of meat with it my next topic I'd like to discuss is house shoes. Many of us in the US would call them slippers. It's pretty much where guests and anyone who enters the house will take off their shoes and then either put on house shoes or just stay in their socks. That is very German because in the US you have a closet where you put your shoes into but here you just keep your shoes in that main area. In the US recycling is kind of a joke. <laughs> So there are many towns that don't do recycling or they're slowly getting into it. But where I live, we have one bin for trash and then one bin for recycling. But in Germany, there are about five different versions of it. And so to begin, there is the blue bin and that is used for paper and cardboard. Then green, white, and brown. They're more of like specially like shaped bins a lot and that is used for glass so the green is for green glass, brown is for brown glass, and white is for clear. But a lot of the time when people have beer glasses 
they normally place them either beside a public trash can where people can come and pick them up and collect them and then they get money back for these glasses and then the next is yellow slash like orange colors and that is used for plastic and metal pretty much but a lot of people just use it for plastic plastic it's very hard to recycle and so in berlin they are working on a law pretty much limiting a lot of plastic goods so what you buy in the grocery store it'll be in a biodegradable container or in glass some sort of form other than plastic and then next is a brown bin that is used for biodegradable so compost anything that's food related goes into this container and then it gets picked up lastly is gray slash black and that's pretty much everything else or resmood is what it's called and that's pretty much anything that can't be sorted into recycling it's because school is definitely one of the biggest differences i would say because it is <laughs> is very different so to begin with, in the US, we normally have substitute teachers or subs, where it is when a teacher is sick or cannot attend class, then they have this person who comes in and they watch over the class or do activities or give assignments until the teacher comes back. In Germany, we normally have Auswahl or Vertretikum, I believe that's what it's called. And so Auswahl is pretty much when you have no school Betraytikum is when there's another teacher that doesn't teach that hour, so then they come in and sit in on your class. Now we're going on to a little bit more random things. I wanted to bring up, because this is something that's totally different in the like in Europe and Germany, is that bathroom stalls have no gaps in them. So a lot of Americans will know this, <laughs> where you go into a bathroom stall and then you can normally see like that much of a diff of a distance. <laughs> when someone can see in and you can see out and there's also like gaps about like this big from the floor or bigger <laughs> it's really weird but there's a lot of gaps to see in and out of the bathroom because here there's nothing the door goes from the ground to like above you so that like, you are completely covered there's no gaps in between you just open up the door and then you close it and there's special things that block those areas where the hinges are and it's so weird. The last thing with bathrooms is that you have to pay for them most of the time here. You do have to pay like a euro to two euros because it pretty much helps keep them more sanitary and it also pays the people who clean them. A completely other topic. Another thing that's really big is smoking cigarettes in Germany. There are more people who smoke cigarettes than just smoking a e-cigarette but cigarettes are definitely more popular and people have these pouches oh insert a photo here these pouches that have tobacco in them and then they have papers that they roll them up themselves you see it a lot on the trains the first time in haters life was when i saw these cigarette vending machines so they have them at like the supermarkets that was a weird one i'll insert the video here and then there's also a lot of train stations in public places you can find these vending machines where they scan your id and then you can just press a button and then it comes out like normal vending machines it's really weird but it's really like funny to look at because it's just like you're buying a candy bar except it's a cigarette this is the last car related topic but stoplights here it's very interesting because there's many people who drive stick shift cars and here, when you're sitting at a red light, when the light's about to turn green, it goes red, yellow, green. So when that yellow turns, that's when you normally shift your car and then the yellow is there for like a second maybe and then it turns to green and then it's just so easy to keep on going because Germans like to drive really fast and they like to be efficient with their time. Normal how in the US it just goes green, yellow, red, and then red to green, but I don't know. It's very interesting to see these lights turn different colors and just do different things. So yeah, my <laughs> camera just died, but that was pretty much some of the biggest differences or just what I've seen and what I've noticed, but there are so, so many more. Yeah, but I might be doing more 
sit down videos and yeah see you next time auf wiedersehen